This is The Brandon Smith Show, and the entire purpose of the show is one singular thing, and that is to help you live a life that much more free from dysfunction. And so today's topic, I really, I always think of our topics are, are great for dealing with dysfunction. I can't really think of a better topic to address dysfunction than, than the topic of kindness. And so today we're going to talk about how do you bring more kindness to the world? And to take us on this journey, I have a special guest with us. Shanti, we didn't talk about this, but I would, I would label you also, in addition to everything else you do, a kindness expert. So I've got Shanti Feldhahn with us today. And Shanti is um, kind of a, you started off as an analyst on Wall Street and kind of unexpectedly became this kind of world-renowned social researcher. How many books have you written now, Shanti? You know, I, I was realizing I need to add it up. If you include everything that we've done, including curricula, that kind of stuff, probably about 25. 25 books. That is crazy. And they've all been, what I love about it is while they've all different, they all have this, because I'm passionate about this, a relationship theme. They're all about yeah. how do you build better, healthier relationships, whether it's with your spouse or with a coworker at work or just in general in life. And so you've now taken on this t challenge of how do we bring more kindness to the world. So before we jump into this topic of kindness, which I've got a lot of questions for you today, Shanti, <laughs> about this, because I think, I think we need this more than ever. Uh, I, I take a few moments to kind of tell my listeners your journey. How did you end up getting, doing what you're doing now? This seems like a interesting leap from being an analyst on Wall Street. Yeah, no, actually this whole thing started, my very first book, um, in this sort of all these relationship studies and stuff came out of stumbling over something that I didn't know about men. This whole mm. thing started because it's a long story, but when I moved down from working on wall street and living in New York to Atlanta, where my husband and I live now, I had this chance to write a couple of novels. And um, wow. one of the main characters in this novel that I was writing was a man. And I realized I didn't know how to put thoughts in his head. <laughs> like, I didn't. What do I know about what a guy would be thinking? And um, and no, I had not 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 a lot. Not not <laughs> not, not, not much. <laughs> well, okay. Well, here's the problem, though. Like, it's a novel. I have to say what I, my main character is I, thinking. I, I, I totally, I totally get you. Yeah. So this whole thing started because um, when I would ask Jeff, my husband, or we'd be out to dinner with another couple or something. And I'd go to the other guy and I'd say, can I interview you? <laughs> and sort of, here's the scene in the book. What would you be thinking if this was you? And as these men started telling me what they'd really be thinking half the time, I'm like, seriously, like it just shocked some, me. Some of the things I was hearing. And, and then as I started doing more of these conversations and having, you know, sort of became like a thing, like now I'm going to start asking guys in the grocery store, like, what would you be thinking? Eventually, I realized what I was hearing was actually, in all seriousness, it was really, really fundamental. It was it wasn't things that these guys were thinking like every couple of months that came up. These were things that these men described thinking and feeling wishing their wives knew or their girlfriend knew like every day, multiple times a day. And, um, and I'd been married about eight years at that point. And of course I'm like, why didn't I know this before? And that's, I think when the analyst hat went on, right. And that's yeah. kind of when I thought, you know, I just, it, it was, it was a long story, but had this amazing chance to turn it into a big national study of men. And it ended up, I put it out as this book called for women only. And it, instantly became this huge unexpected bestseller it's in 25 languages now and um and that ended up putting me on a different path of becoming a social researcher like okay like what is it not just that we women don't know about men but men don't know about women and okay let's study now teenagers and parenting let's study corporate stuff in the workplace and it just it ended up expanding um wow. but that's how the whole thing started i i wish i could say it was some master plan, but I just stumbled over it. So then now if we fast forward up to closer to today, now we're on yeah. kindness. How did you get yeah. down this path? What, what made you say, yeah, kindness? Yeah. So I ultimately for the last, I've been doing this for 16 years now. And, um, and a couple of years ago, I ended up well, a few more years than that now, but I, I ended up looking at all the threads that were running through all the studies we've done. Because right now we're in the middle of our ninth 
nationally representative giant study. And wow. so when we had gotten about six or seven in, I started going, okay, I feel like my job is to be digging out those things that you don't realize that once you have that aha moment and the light bulb goes on over your head about something, whatever that thing is in your relationships or in your life, that'll help you thrive. You know, you, Brandon, you talk about, you know, reducing dysfunction and it's that kind of stuff. Like, what is it that if you just remove this thing from your life or you just do this thing differently, that it's going to have a big impact and you can quantify. And that's my job is to quantify what that impact is. And I looked back through all the studies and I saw that there's this thread running through all of them. And that's that it, whether you're thriving in your life and whether you're thriving in your relationships, it turns out it's far more correlated to how you treat other people than how you yourself are treated, Mm. which is completely different from what we instinctively think, which is I have to make sure that my partner is treating me well. I have to make sure that things are fair to me at work, which, I mean, there's nothing wrong with wanting those things, but it turns out that the feeling and the sensation and the reality that you're thriving in this relationship or you're thriving at work or whatever, it's far more related to how you're choosing to treat other people than how they're treating you. And I realized, okay, that's really, as I looked at this, it's all about kindness. And so what does that look like? Um, because the, the laugh of this, as I started looking at this is that all of us already think we are kind. It's like, <laughs> like being, that. we all think we're, we oh, all think we're great drivers and we all think we're kind. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> exactly. So that's basically what the study was like, are there things that we can specifically do that are going to quantitatively have the biggest impact on helping our relationships thrive? So that's what this was. Oh, super cool. Okay. All right. Oh, and I I should tell you, I've taken your kindness quiz as well. Oh, really? I have. So I I have have so many questions. So we're going to, I'm keeping my eye eye on the clock. I'm I'm going to dive in a little bit about this. Sure. Um, So why is it that we are not as kind as, as much as we think we are? We think we're kind, but we're, we're really not. So, you know, I mean, what, what, why is that? Yeah, we're deluded, really, is, is the issue. And here's really the, the bottom line, is that we don't know. You know how when you're driving along a road and there's and you start to pull over and you hear somebody honk and they were in your blind spot, yep. right? Like, literally, there is a physical blind spot that you can't see that there's a car right there. And it turns out that in our lives, we have a blind spot as well that and it has to do with our level of kindness we literally don't realize those ways that we are unkind that we are negative that we are hurting somebody else's feelings in ways that none of us would intend i mean most of us maybe some people but most of us would not intend and and i'll give you mine for example is, is, and this is like embarrassing to admit, but I'll admit it because, you know, you're my new best friend. Right? Absolutely. So, no, no, yeah. Nobody's so, listening or watching. It's just you and me. <laughs> yeah, nobody else. <laughs> I, I, and this is, this is awful, but I will admit that when I started this research project and we started seeing the things that mattered, which we can, I'm sure, go into in a minute, but one of them was to withhold negativity and unkindness. And I thought to myself, well, I need to work on these other things, but that one's not going to be a problem. I mean, I'm not negative, right? I'm a pretty positive person. I'm a glass half full kind of girl and I'm not unkind. Oh my gosh. (laughs) Once I actually started cataloging the types of negativity, the types of unkindness, turns out there's seven different patterns that we identified. Everybody has at least one. Oh, wow. Some of us have more <laughs> than one. Um, oh. as, but as I started cataloging them, I realized I am negative every single stinking day because one of the patterns of negativity and unkindness is exasperation. And I get exasperated with my kids all the time. And I don't realize, like with my son, right? Like 
you know, he's this sweet kid, but you know, he can be a little disorganized. He's 15 years old. Like we can work on something, a project for a couple hours and then he'll forget to turn it in. <laughs> it kills me. Uh, I have I, no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> yes, I'm sure you don't. I've never no experienced parents, no, anything like, like and that before. My voice will rise and I'll be like, buddy, come on. We worked on this and I'll have the exasperated tone. My voice will be rising. I don't realize that what I'm saying is you're an idiot. Like, would I ever use those actual words with my sweet, sensitive son? Of mm. course not. But that's exactly what I'm saying. It's certainly what he's hearing. And so when I started to realize that and I thought, oh, my gosh, like, I have this giant blind spot that I am not as kind as I think I am. And I have to learn what are those patterns that are going to wreck the car, so to speak, if I don't figure them out? Yeah. So I, I want to talk about, we're going to go into break in a minute, and I want to talk about ways we can practically get better at this and then talk about your yeah. challenge and, and, and things people can do even beyond this podcast. But sure. it feels like today it's harder to be kind than any other time I've been alive. Is that, yeah. Am I just making that up? No, no, you're, it, you are absolutely accurate. I mean, there've been a bunch of studies that have been done, but the reality is something we all know. We don't need a study. Like just our culture has become so unkind and we've all bemoaned it. At least most of us have like, oh, things have gotten so bad. They're so cruel. Social media is so awful. Politics is blah, you know, like there's all this yeah. stuff. We just don't realize that A, we're a part of it. <laughs> And and B, there's actually something that we can do about it, but it takes being purposeful because you're right. It's harder. It takes self-control to actually not respond in the same way that somebody is responding to us because it just seems like we have permission now. Yeah. Yeah. But it, it, it is true. I mean, it is accurate that no, actually, you can you can be part of the solution instead of part of the problem. You just you have to be aware of it first. Yeah. So really kind of noticing when you're doing it. And I, I have to admit, yeah. I mean, I know where my big weak spot is. And since I live in Atlanta and you live in Atlanta, the traffic in this town is yes. a, um, yes, it is a trigger for unkindness for me. I'll be driving. I'll say, I know you're about to cut me off. I know that. And there you go. There you go. Cutting me <laughs> off just like I predicted. <laughs> and it's hard. Well, it is. And I know we got to go to a break, but I have an example I'd love to give you. Please. About that. Can I do that now or okay. after the break? Why don't you give it now and then we'll roll to break. Okay. So one of the things that we found is that when you're kind and it, this mostly works when you're kind, when you really don't want to be. Okay. <laughs> so that's, that's the so key. You mean here. I have to do this when I don't want to be? Yes, that's the deal. <laughs> that's so the deal. thank you, Shanti, for coming on to my show. Yes, I know. <laughs> You're going to cut me off right now. I get it. Um, but here's one of the things we found is that if you will do, if you will actually employ kindness and become kind when you don't feel like it, there's a sort of a cascade of positive things that happen. And one of the, we sort of joke that it's like kindness is sort of a superpower. Like, you know, I love Marvel movies and everybody has a superpower. And I I actually realized, you know, if we think about it, kindness is actually kind of supernatural. Like it has an impact that we we don't realize. And I'll give you an example from your traffic. Okay. All right, <laughs> yeah. I'm ready. So we we talk about kindness makes us bulletproof, you know, like Superman. And and one of the examples that, that can be seen is when you are about to be cut off in traffic or like you know those times when the highway narrows down to one lane and and you're standing in line with everybody else waiting to get off or whatever, and there's always that car that speeds down to the end and tries to cut in. And you're like, oh, no, you didn't. Like, I don't know about you, but I'm like up on the bumper of the car in front of me like, no, you were not going to get in. I waited in line. <laughs> and and then, but now, now what's happening is that driver is being unkind. And they are firing bullets at you and they're hurting and they're hitting and it's frustrating. Okay. The bullets are hitting. Now imagine that instead they speed down to the end and instead you decide completely unwarranted kindness. You decide you're going to back off a little bit. You're going to wave them in. You're going to smile. You're going to let them go. And 
And there's no reason for it. They're still firing bullets. They're still being mean and rude, but you're responding in kindness. Now, what happens in your heart? You can almost feel that tension lifting. You suddenly feel better. What's happened is they are still firing those bullets, but the bullets are bouncing off. You've completely taken away that person's ability to make you crazy. And it was entirely because you decided to be kind. I think that's a really important point, too, is when we respond, when we kind of match levels and we respond in unkindness. Now, we're actually letting them kind of drive our emotional state. I think that's so true. Okay. Yeah. All right. So let's let's take a break. And when we come back from break, we are going to chat about how to actually do this. I've already got my first tip of the day. I know how to operate in traffic, or, or at least I know <laughs> what I should be doing in traffic. I'll try it today. So stay with us. Uh, we're going to come right when we come back from break. We're going to talk about kindness and how to make your life that much more full of it. Hey, this is Brandon. This is your coaching minute for the week. So often, if you're anything like me, you get busy and you forget to do this one really simple thing at least once a year that is so important. And it is this, update your LinkedIn profile. It is your resume. It's a way to spotlight not only what you're doing, but it's also your professional network. It's the one thing that if you're employed somewhere can't be taken away from you. So your tip this week is go open up your LinkedIn profile. Ask yourself these questions. Is my headshot up to date? Is my current position and description up to date? Is there anything else I can add in about what I do that would be interesting or valuable to give people more perspective? And then finally, find five to 10 people that you know that you can reach out to and connect so you can expand that network. So keep your LinkedIn profile updated, and not only will it be helping you to promote what you do out in the world, it'll also help you build that network, which is just so incredibly valuable. So that is your coaching minute for the week. I look forward to hearing how it goes. Welcome back to the Brandon Smith Show. Uh, of course, I'm your host, Brandon Smith, and we are talking about kindness today. And so, Shanti, when we went into break, you were giving some great examples. I've already got my first nugget for the day. We've talked a little bit about how to even operate and orient ourselves, even in traffic, because that's a great opportunity for definitely for me. I'm guilty there. And maybe for others listening, I, I would assume. So I want to now talk about other ways we can bring more kindness to to the world. And and, in spirit of doing that, I think your kindness challenge is a great way to help us all do that. So talk to us a little bit about what the kindness challenge is and what are some ways we can start to move down that path. And then at the end, we'll talk even about more resources people can download and get from you and of course buy the book so they can really bring this to life. Yeah, that's great. Well, the the practice that we eventually quantified after all of those years of doing different study groups and have people do different things is we ended up calling it the 30 day kindness challenge. And, um, and so here's what it is. And this is the one, one of the things that can help no matter what the relationship is that you want. I mean, you know, it can be with your spouse, like maybe you're in a difficult season in your marriage or Maybe you got a great marriage. You just want to make it better. Um, it could so, be with your kids. Like I did this for my 16 year old daughter at the time. So you don't have to pick, you can pick a relationship that you want to work on that might be kind of not yeah. where you want it to be, or you can just pick yeah. a relationship that is already good, but you want to keep feeding it. Good care yeah. and feeding for that relationship. There's no yeah. right or wrong. Okay, great. No. Yeah. Like, like, let's just say that you've always wished you had a better relationship with your mother-in-law, right? Like yeah. this will work. So So here's what you do is you pick that one relationship. And by the way, it's super, super important. The very first time you do the 30 day kindness challenge, do it for one person because there's a temptation to kind of do it broadly, like a bunch of different people. And what we found is ultimately the most important thing that this does is it, it sort of reveals your blind spots. And when there's too many, when you're trying to do it for too many people, you're not going to see them the same way. So do it the oh, first time for just I one person. I wouldn't have thought, I would, I would have thought more is better. Yeah, I would have too. But we actually found 
statistically, it was counterproductive. And I can see that. So that when you run into an obstacle, you can't just go to another person. You've got to stay yeah. with that obstacle. You're like, darn it. And here it is. <laughs> darn it. <laughs> um, so here's what it is. Here's what the 30 day kindness challenge actually is, is, is you do three things for 30 days. So first you don't say anything negative about that person either to them or about them to somebody else. <laughs> and this is really where the rubber meets the road for a lot of us. Cause like, let's just say I was in a difficult season with my husband. If, I, if I'm in a difficult place with him, I can be polite to him. But if I go to my girlfriends at work and I'm kind of like, Ugh, you would not believe what he did yesterday. I don't realize it, but I'm actually sabotaging how I feel about him. And, and oh, by the way, mm. I'm training myself to be an unkind person. Like, I wouldn't think of it that way, but that's what I'm doing. So nothing negative, either to them or about them. And the second thing that you do every day for 30 days is you find one thing that you can sincerely praise, one thing you can sincerely affirm about them, and you tell them, and you tell somebody else. So I can't like, I can't complain about my husband, but I'm looking for things to praise. And so like, let's just say I noticed that he, he, um, picked up our son from one of his activities so that I could stay at a long meeting. And I say, you know, thanks so much for doing that. And then I go to my girlfriends at work the na- next day and I say, you know what he did yesterday? He left work early so he could come do this thing. And I'm, I'm, what I'm doing is solidifying in my brain these things that are actually good about him instead of maybe what I had been focusing on before, which is more of the bad stuff. Okay, so I got a question about that number two. So um, it can be any, it doesn't have to be a grandiose thing. It can be a pretty basic no. thing. No, like like this morning, for example, um, I was super tired because I'm not a morning person anyway. And so this morning I noticed that my husband got up a little bit early because we have these guests here, right? And we, we, he got up a little bit early and went downstairs and made a bunch of coffee, set food out, like, so that I could sleep in for another 10, 15 minutes. Like I might think, oh, that's really nice of him, but it makes a huge difference when I say it. And it makes a huge difference when I tell the guests you know, Jeff set all this out for you. It's that so sweet of him rather than them assuming that I did it or whatever. Okay. So here's my second question on number two, because you just did it. You not only did you tell him, you just told me and everybody else listening. So is in order for number two to work, do you have to tell another person in addition to telling? Okay. So that's part of it. You have, you you can't just tell the person to tell somebody else, go find somebody else. To, to, to share the same thing with. Say, to say, right. it doesn't have to be the same thing, but something that you can praise. Like, listen to this cool thing that he did this morning. Like, or, you know, it can be compl- something completely different. Like telling my kids, hey, you know what? Um, your, your dad, he was so, so, I saw this thing that happened yesterday with, you know, these two people were having an argument and he was so wise and how he mediated it. Like, that has nothing to do with coffee in the morning, but mm. it was me affirming him to somebody else. Yeah, okay. All right, so we've we've got number one, number two, there's a third. There is. So the third thing every day for 30 days is to do a small action of kindness, a small action of generosity for them. Oh. And and these are so these can be so varied. It's so different from what we think. Like we think in sort of the random acts of kindness movements, right? We think of a kind an act of kindness as being some big thing you do for somebody like you know you pay for the food of the beat up car behind you in the drive through at McDonald's or whatever yeah. and and instead i mean that's fine there's nothing wrong with just applying that to this person whatever that is but it goes far beyond acts of service we like for example i did the actual 30 day kindness challenge when when i was testing this and doing it for myself i did this for my daughter who was 16 years old at the time And I mean, she's 16. She's a, she's a great kid, but she's 16. Like, you know, she can roll her eyes with the best of them and it would make my head explode. And, and so I did this and I realized like for her, an action of generosity is doing something that sort of prioritizes her in the moment. It puts myself into her world and cares about the things she cares about. That's one type of generosity. You wouldn't think of it. 
So an example would be, you know, I'd be sitting and working on my computer on a deadline. I'm sitting there typing and she comes in and she's like, Hey mom, watch this little, I got this little funny YouTube video. And in my normal state, sadly, I'm like in an hour, honey, (laughs) you know what I'm done with this deadline. And it's an action of generosity for me to turn my attention from what I'm doing and put it on her and watch this funny little video. It's like five minutes, but it matters to her that I do it then when she's excited about it rather than an hour later when it's on my time. That's just a little thing, but it is an action of generosity. And what we found is that if you do, again, we're talking little things. These are not big deals. These are little deals. But when you do these little things every day for 30 days and do these three things, what we found is that 89% of relationships improved. Wow. 89%. 89%. Yeah. That is, that is huge. You don't, you generally don't see those kinds of numbers in social science. And the reality is I started looking at this because I was almost like, I'm rechecking all my spreadsheets. Like, is that, is that, can that possibly be the right number? And what I finally realized is, wait a minute, it makes perfect sense that 89% of relationships would improve because the biggest thing that you're doing is you're not just sort of impacting them and changing sort of the temperature of the relationship, the biggest thing that you're doing is you're changing you. So it makes perfect yeah. sense that most relationships would improve. You know, there's something about number three that I, I heard in the way you described it that I thought, oh, that's really empowering for me and for people listening. So when I first heard you say kind of those acts of kindness, I thought, okay, man, now I got to go every day thinking about what am I going to do for this person? But actually the examples you gave were also about looking for opportunities to respond in a kind way. So yeah. it doesn't always have to be proactive. You don't have to come in with a no. plan every day of today I'm going to bring them donuts, tomorrow I'm going to no. whatever. It, it can be, oh, I noticed this person's like uh, saying something in a meeting and normally I'd roll my eyes. But this time I'm going to really listen and I'm going to nod my head in an affirming way and maybe even say, exactly. I, I like what she said. That's, that's, uh, that's, she makes a good point here. You kind of you can compliment that. So you, you look for the opportunities. You don't always have to come in with a with a, with a plan every day and put it in your outlook calendar. Today is coffee day. Tomorrow is donut day. Well, and, and to be candid, one of the things that we found that was really to me sort of fascinating as a researcher, I mean, cause I'm sort of a nerd when it comes to stuff, I can dig into all of this. And, and I was really encouraged to see that there are actually different patterns of generosity that come naturally to different people. Mm. And so And so for me, acts of service, like, okay, I need to bring in donuts. I need to do this. I need to make the coffee. I need to, you know, those don't come as naturally to me. Um, I don't, it's, it's like my brain doesn't work that way. Like I can force myself to do it, which is good sometimes, but there are other patterns of generosity that may come more naturally. And once you identify what yours are, we found there were about eight of them there that once you identify, you know, these two or three actually come naturally to me, then it can be looking for opportunities to do them. And it's sending that signal to this person, because what we found that matters about those things, it's not about the thing that you're doing, because usually it's pretty small. It but what it says is the message that it sends is what matters, which is, you're valuable. You're worth this. And if it's coming from your own strength, it's genuine. Or it's going to be more likely to be felt as genuine by you and received as genuine by the person getting it. Okay, so I'm I'm lying the clock. We are, gosh, time flies. We are almost towards the end here. Uh, All right, no problem. So, hmm. Oh my gosh, Auntie, so many, so many questions. So one, I ask all my guests this when we get towards the end. I always ask, what's one life hack you might have for us on how we can live our lives that much more free from dysfunction? It can be personal, professional, anything's fair game. Okay, the the biggest one, and actually I, I, I have studied this, believe it or not. <laughs> and one of the most important things you can do statistically is to believe the best of the other person's intentions towards you when you're frustrated or hurt. Uh, I heard someone this week describe it as, you know, a uh, whole positive intent. 
yeah. or the other person. Yeah, you, just... you, the psychologists call it some, it's got a word, it's called a negative override or a positive override. Negative override is the assumption that, oh man, they excluded me from that meeting because they know that I'm in the running for the same promotion, right? Yeah. That's a negative override. It's assuming bad intent. And yeah, okay, sometimes that happens. But in most cases, especially with the people that you're close to and the people you work with every day, in most cases, actually, it's not bad intent. It's usually there's some other explanation. And especially the closer and closer the relationship is, like with your kids, with your partner, it is essential for you to assume that they actually care about you and that whatever this thing was that they said that hurt your feelings for example, instead of, oh, they knew how that would make me feel, and they said it anyway, which assumes they don't care, it's just go, no, no, I know they care about me. Mm. I know that they care about me, so they must not have known how that would make me feel, or they wouldn't have said it. You're believing the best. It's called a positive override. Yes. Yeah, so, and it changes everything in your life. And if that's you do. so consistent with what we talked about here today, is holding yeah. that, trying to hold that in your mind yeah. versus the negative. All right. So if, if, because I think what you have offered to us and the gift of this today, we can use in our uh, personal relationships with our significant others. We can use with our children. We can use with relatives. We can use with neighbors. We can use with coworkers, which in some cases can be even the hardest, particularly when politics are involved. So if people want to learn more about the, the 30 day kindness challenge, get the book, get more resources and tools, where can they go? So um, the easiest place is to go to the one-stop shopping part, not shopping because everything's free, but you know what I mean, is is to go to this website called jointhekindnesschallenge.com. Join the join kindness, the, so all one, kind of one word, jointhekindnesschallenge.com. Exactly. And they'll be able to find, actually, a lot of people are interested in getting daily reminders um, because, you know, we have daily reminders yeah. that can go out with a little bit of coaching, sort of like, okay, what do you do if you want to kill your husband instead? <laughs> you know, yeah. that kind of stuff. And so and there's also the assessments, like you, it sounds like you took an assessment to figure out where are you starting yeah. in this journey <laughs> and things like, you know, small group curriculum, like if you want to do it with a group, a small group at work, or you want to do it with a group of girlfriends or whatever. Shanti, thank you. Awesome. I, I mean, sure thing. I, I've already been impressed, and I, I think that the tools you have available are incredible. And it's so simple and yet so critical because I know with a lot of even the clients I coach, it'll be that one relationship that they don't want to work on, and yet they know it's going to be their downfall, whether it's at home or at work. And if they'll just yeah. invest, what I love is just invest 30 days and try it yeah. and see how it goes. Yeah. Well, they will find the first two or three days are the big eye-opening days. But then as they start doing this, oh my goodness, the responses you see, they will be the best possible incentive to continue. Awesome. Fantastic. You're an absolute gift. Thank you so much for coming so on the show. And uh, thank you for listening. Catch a new show each Sunday at 7.30 p.m. on iTunes, the thebrandonsmithshow.com, and of course, live on Facebook, facebook.com forward slash Brandon Smith for, and forward slash WPT for Workplace Therapist. And if you've enjoyed today's show, and I certainly hope you have, please rate, review, and subscribe to the show on iTunes. So until uh, next week and our next show, have a great week and an awesome life.